For years, I tried to top the mac and cheese that my dad makes. I tried making the traditional Mornay sauce with a butter and flour roux mixed with milk and then Gruyere and all kinds of fancy cheese, but it never came out as good as dad's, which uses no roux at all and is instead built upon processed American cheese. Start by putting enough water on the boil for a pound of pasta and then put another big pan on medium heat. That's one quart of whole milk. Then comes the cheese, a whole 16 ounce package of Kraft Deli Deluxe American cheese. This is different from Kraft Singles. It contains enough real cheddar or Colby cheese for the US government to consider it cheese. Other types have to be labeled as cheese product. You start tearing it into pieces so that it melts relatively quickly and evenly. I think it's probably the emulsifiers in this processed cheese that make the recipe work without the use of roux as a thickener or binder. And the whole thing comes out much smoother as a result. Then we take a little black pepper. And no salt. There's plenty of salt in that cheese, but you could totally add some more herbs and spices at this stage if you wanted. And it will slowly melt over a period of about five to 10 minutes. Oh, and we forgot the butter. Anywhere between a half and a whole stick of butter goes in and just melts with the cheese. Keep stirring it. Meanwhile, get yourself a pound of large pasta shells or honestly, whatever shape you want. Salt your boiling water and dump in the pasta. Parboil it for five minutes, no more, or they'll be mushy after they bake. You can see that sauce is nice and smooth now. Get yourself a baking dish that's at least two and a half quarts and lube it up. Drain your pasta, then it's time to assemble. Pasta goes into the dish, pour in the sauce, stir around a little bit. It should look too soupy at this stage. If it doesn't, it's gonna be dry and gloppy after it bakes. Covering it up for the first part of baking will help the whole thing cook a little bit more evenly if you're into that. I actually don't cover it because I like the top super dry and crispy, but you do you. In the oven it goes at 350 Fahrenheit for 45 minutes covered. Now if you're thinking, this is a recipe an eight-year-old could do, you're right. Grandma Ragusia started my dad making this by himself when he was eight while everybody was at work on Fridays because, like all good Catholics, they wouldn't eat meat that night. After 45 minutes, pull it out and take the cover off, then give it another half hour or so until the top layer of cheese is brown. If it's not browning enough to your liking, you could always flip on the broiler at the very end. Now you could eat some brown bits off the top like a dirty thief right now, but you gotta let the whole thing rest for like half an hour before you spoon it out. Otherwise the sauce will just run out all over the plate. I like to eat it with some salad, often on the same forkful. Acidic crunch is a great contrast with soft richness. It might not look fancy, but for an unbiased opinion on the taste, here's Lauren. Um, I love macaroni and cheese, and I've always tried to make macaroni and cheese at home, and it's always been trash, and it's delicious. <laughs> Yep, the flavor is stronger and the texture far smoother than mac and cheese made with quote unquote real cheese. Give it a chance. This may be that childhood food memory you've been chasing and never been able to get back. Okay. Do I have to stop eating it now? <laughs> no. 